Go. Back on. Okay. So, just want to let you know, I'm a little extra fired up today. I'm a little extra fired up because of, well, two things. It was a great, yesterday was just an awesome day for, to, um, first of all, go to a men's conference and have Tony Evans, get to hear two messages from him, and uh, get to pray with him, and um, anyway, uh, just excited, still excited about that. It takes a while for that to wear off on me. I'm, I'm, I, I get easily excited. Uh, so, with that, I want to, uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody that um, participate, helped in any way with the Fall Festival. Those of you that came out, I just want to appreciate all you did, and um, just had an awesome day, great turnout, and a lot of people were helping, and as I looked around, I seen people serving, and um, just want to thank you all for, for doing that, and then also for those, uh, then that was Saturday, then starting uh, Monday, we started the winter relief with the homeless, and and a, a lot of people have been sacrificing their time, staying here at night, and you know losing sleep. So I want to thank you all for for your efforts and for your showing your love to those uh, that are struggling right now. And just remember, you know, being homeless could could be any one of us. You know, it's there's none of us that are above that. Um, so just be thankful, and that you know, and just uh, thank you for helping. Thanks for being the hands and feet of Jesus. So. Um, I just uh, really appreciate you guys. It's, it was just a, a pleasure for me to, to look around Saturday and just to see how everything just went really good. Everybody served. Everybody was doing their thing and uh, just really, really awesome. Um, I don't know about you guys, but life seems to be moving at the speed of sound for me. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. It, the days are just, it's just flying by. Time is Time is flying. Trying to juggle, as some of you d deal with all this, work, family, church, ministry, sickness, unexpected circumstances, exercise, deadlines, events, and then the last I saved for least is rest, which we have very little of. Most of us get very little sleep because um, of our busy schedules, so we only have a few hours a day to sleep. So, But we just, uh, the, pr the praise is that God just gives us that supernatural energy to, to keep on keeping on and keep on going. And, um, and that's the great thing about having a relationship with Jesus. It's not a superficial relationship. It is a supernatural relationship. And I tell you, I get my energy and my, I just thank him for that, that, that Holy Spirit power that, that keeps, keeps me going every day. And, um, but man, time is going slow. But I believe Jesus wants us to sometimes stop and smell the roses you know i got a little stuff going on here this is um these roses were uh our very own from out here or if you notice the sign the roses were like halfway up the sign so it worked out perfect that there was a great day for john to trim them he trimmed it up for me and brought gave me some here and uh after the service i welcome you all to, to take a rose all of you all that would like to have one and um now we can see the sign, and we're blessed. Uh, and my office smells like roses. They were in there all night. And man, it just, as soon as you walk in there, it's just roses. And I also bought a candle, which I didn't even need in my office because it smell. You keep these in a, a small room for a while, man, that smell just comes out, and it's really powerful. But um, we need to take time to do that sometimes. And um, today I want us to shift gears from... Um, from that speed of sound to try to slow down a little bit to try to look and just stop and smell the roses sometimes we got to do that and I know I'm definitely guilty I'm de definitely guilty of that uh, Ecclesiastes 5 18 through 20 I want us to look at that first so let's look at what it says in Ecclesiastes here it says behold what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him this for this is his lot everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot 
and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come here today, Lord, Lord, seeking your good and perfect will for our lives, Lord. But we, Lord, we, we just desire to be in your presence, Lord. Lord, help us now to take the distractions away, uh, Lord, to, and, and just to slow down and to enjoy the moment here today, that we're in your presence here today, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that, Lord, that you take us right where we're at, Lord, and help us, Lord, and, and help us to take this, these scriptures that, that we have today and let, them, let us apply them, Lord, to our lives, Lord, so we can um, just not just pass by the blessings that you have for us, Lord. So, Lord, just move in a mighty way in this place. Lord, we thank you for the many children that came today. Lord, I want to lift up Lena and Susan, Lord, as they lost their mom and grandmom last night, Lord. Lord, just pray that you anoint them with the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would let them experience your peace, the peace that passes all understanding, and guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we just pray that your presence is, is powerful in their lives, Lord. And Lord, even as Lena is ministering to the children, Lord, Lord, just give her uh, just a, a special touch of love from, from, you, from heaven, Lord. And we just want to give you all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, those of you know Joanne, who usually sits in the back back there, uh, she went home to be with the Lord last night. So um, uh, as uh, Heidi said, we had four generations here. We had uh, Lena's children, Lena, her mom, and her grandma. So we had four generations, but now it's down to three. But, you know, she is, she's not here in the service, which she would be here if she could, but she is in the awesome worship service um, in heaven. So... And I'm sure she's smiling down on us today. Lord, um, I want to I wanna read. I've never done this before, uh, so don't beat me over the head too bad. Um, I'm doing a couple things I've never done before today. But I'm going to read from the message. That is a paraphrase. And I read the regular scripture first, so I'm not, I'm, I'm going to give you, I, did, I got it on my notes here. So this is a paraphrase, but I thought it really fit well with, what trying to do here so yes they're in my office um, Sorry. it's okay they need the key uh, the, in my office go in the drawer and down on the bottom uh, the top drawer you'll, it'll be marked shed okay after looking at the, the way things are on this earth here's what I've decided is the best way to live Take care of yourself, have a good time, and make the most of whatever job you have for as long as, as God gives you life, and that's about it. That's the human lot. Yes, we should make the most of what God gives, both in the bounty and the capacity to enjoy it, accepting what's giving and delighting in the work. I want us to uh, take some time today to, uh, as we're doing, stop and smell the roses, and I want to give us... I got nine things that I would like us to go over real quick. Uh, number one, living in the present. We should be living in the pre present. Live life, enjoy the blessings, okay? And enjoy them each day. Make the most of what God gives you. He is going, He's promised to, to give you to meet your daily needs. It might not be what you want. It may not be what you need for tomorrow. But He's, only, he's, he's, he's promised to meet our needs for today, for now. Okay, we have no power in the past, nor can we change, the, we can't change the past, can we? What, what's happened has happened, it's, it's done, nor do we have any power in the future. You know, our power is for now, in the moment. That we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. You've got to just re get a reality check. The reality check is that Jesus' Spirit lives in you. And I'm telling you, if Jesus is living in you, you have all that you need. You may not even know the, 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 the benefits you have of, rec of receiving the Holy Spirit when you're born again. And you and I can make a difference 
and live in the power of the Holy Spirit in the present. We, we can make a difference today. We can make a difference today when we have them divine appointments that God gives us. And we all get them. We have these appointments from God where we don't unexpectedly, there's someone comes into our life and we get an opportunity to minister to them, talk to them, uh, encourage them, or whatever, whatever way God would have you do it. But we can make an eternal difference in the present by just being the hands and feet of Jesus, being the voice of Jesus, being whatever Jesus calls us to be because Jesus lives in us. His Spirit lives in us. You've got to never forget that. You know, we, we look at our, try to live this life on our own strength too much. Number two, not living in the past. So many people do this. Living in the present moment. And we got to focus on what God's doing right now because God is working in your life right now. Whether you can see it or not, That's not the important thing. The important thing is God assures us by his word. And I read scripture, I think it was last two weeks ago, that God is always working. He's always working. He's he's working around us, in us, through us. Uh, But but we can make a difference. And and that's part of the thing that I want to do before I leave this earth is I want to be a difference maker. I want to make a difference in someone's life or or people's lives. But we can... um, make a difference by just looking to Jesus and, and stop looking at things through our own eyes. Look at Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. He's going to put a new song in your heart. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness. Are you living, do you feel like you're in the wilderness right now? Do you feel like you're in the wilderness? But he will make a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. I don't care how dry your life is and what what you're going through. He will put rivers in the desert. He will bring what you need. He will give you what you need. No two days are the same in this life. No two days. Your circumstances may not change, but when you wake up each morning, it's a new day. There will never be another October 22nd, 19, I mean, yeah, 19, 2017. I'm, I'm really going back. There will never be another one. So why are we going to wait and, and, get, and waste it in, in, in the looking back or looking way ahead? Um, look what it says in Luke 9:62. This is Jesus give you a little context Jesus is explaining there is a cost to following him and it says Jesus said to him no one who does that cover that covers pretty much a lot of scripture I'm going to give you is 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 talking to all of you all Uh, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God and I used to use this all the time when I first came to Christ because Satan wanted me to go back to my old ways and he kept on giving me uh the temptations that to so I kept, I, I kept looking back. You know, sometimes we can look. If you drive, it's best not to l- drive in the rearview mirror, right? We don't want to spend a whole lot of time there. We can glance at it, but we don't want to focus on the rearview mirror because if we don't, we're going to what? We're going to crash. And the same thing in life. If we keep looking back, we're going to miss out on what's ahead. We're going to miss out on right now what's, what's today. And, and we've got to realize that, that Jesus wants us to, to uh, embrace the moment. Okay, right now in this at this present moment, let us acknowledge Jesus. I want us to acknowledge Jesus promise that where two or more are gathered in his name. There I am in the midst that he is here today right now. Can I get a praise for that? Can we get a praise the fact that he's here right now that he's in this place? He's in you and 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 he's alive and he's he's working and he's He's ready to change lives today. He's ready to take you from where you're at to where he wants you to be because you're not, you might not be where God wants you to be. He wants, he's got a perfect plan for you. It's just that we sometimes, we ain't listening. We ain't hearing. We're doing our own thing. We're, we're too busy doing our own thing. But let's let God know the fact that, tell him that how you appreciate it. Let him know how much you love him. Let him know about the blessings. Number three, don't worry about tomorrow. We got any warriors here today? Don't worry about tomorrow. Again, live for the moment. Live in the moment. Some of us are worrying our life away because our focus is 
is not right. Our focus is on our problems instead of the problem solver. You have a choice. Again, I say this all the time, but we have the, the promise solver, Jesus. He can solve any problem. He's bigger than any problem. I don't care what you got. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than death. He's bigger than anything. He's God. And then we got our problem. And man, we, we take a problem. I don't care how little it is, man. We can, it, it just gets bigger every day if we just focus on that instead of him. And that's where we mess up. We, we keep focusing on our problems, and we all got problems. There is not one person in here that doesn't have problems. We all do. And guess what? You're going to have problems until the day you die. That's just the way it is. But we also have a problem solver who can take care of any problem. He's bigger. He's better. So amen? Okay. Look at Matthew 6, 33, 34, so I can get your focus right. Here's what we need to be focusing on. But seek first, first, the kingdom of God. Man, if the church could just focus on the kingdom of God and stop looking at each other, because our battle is not against flesh and blood. And, and that's, where, that's where the church gets so distracted, because we're not seeking the kingdom of God first. And his righteousness, his righteousness. And what does it say? What did Jesus say? When you seek his righteousness that you shall be satisfied. You're not satisfied? Maybe you're seeking all the wrong things in all the wrong places, all the wrong people. It's about Jesus. And do all these things will be added to you. That's talking about worry. This, this verse was talking about worry. We're seeking the kingdom because it was talking about worrying about this, worrying about that. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. Some of us have some tomorrows that we're already thinking about, that we got, that, we got an operation coming up. We got something that's wrong with us that we're, we're worried about, because, but it's not here, it's tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Tomorrow will take care of itself. It's coming. So why are you going to waste your time and energy worrying about tomorrow? Wait till the, the day when you have power, because sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You got enough trouble for the day. You don't need tomorrow's too. Don't, don't carry that extra baggage, but you're trusted in Jesus. Number four, enjoy the blessings of each day. Make the most of every opportunity. Make the best use of your time. Look at Psalm 118, verse 24. This, this, when you woke up today, this, this scripture should be, you know what? If you can't, not good at memorization, you should have this this is one of the first things you should be thinking about when you wake up in the morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what you're going through. You have a choice to rejoice and be glad in it. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. He has given you life. He could take you while you're sleeping. He, you don't, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are. So let's be thankful that he's given us another day. So he's got a purpose for us. I believe that he has a purpose for me, that he's letting me live another day because I can make a difference. You can make a difference. We can do something to, to and, and rejoice. And, and, and just being rejoicing in the Lord and, and in relationship with him, even if you're alone or lonely, man, you, know, you are never, he's promised to never leave you nor forsake you. Let, just rejoice in the Lord. Also, I want us to look at Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of your time. Let your speech always, how often are we supposed to let our speech be? Always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. And I, I, I used the example in the first service, I'm going to use it again. I, I went to the, um, I told you I went to the men's conference, they had a Q&A with, with Tony Evans, he had uh, I went to his first session. He had a Q&A. Then he had another session, Q&A. And, um, and it, it, was, it was a privilege for me to, uh, to hear a man of God. You know, when you get a, I don't know how many people were there, a couple of thousand, you never know what question you're going to get. You never know. So he kind of putting himself out there. And as he's, um, they're asking these questions, I, I, I felt pricked by the Lord of God. I felt the, the, prompting of the Holy Spirit to pray for Tony Evans, that he would answer the questions as if Jesus was speaking. And Tony Evans is, is again, he's one of my all-time favorite. I've been listening to him 
and I've got many of his tapes, his books, his uh, series. I I went through so, and I was finally an opportunity to see him in person. And um, but he answered these questions so awesome because you know how he answered them through the Word of God. He didn't use his opinions. Uh, that's what we make the mistake sometimes when people come to us. We give them our opinions. We give them what we think. We give them what we think might be good for them. Not good advice. Man, when you give him the word of God, the word of God is the advice you give. You build it on the truth. You, you, you answer in spirit and truth. You let the truth, God's word, penetrate their hearts. Even if they're not willing to accept it, or, but you still you, you give it to them. Number five, living each day thankfully. Do not take life for granted. We take life for granted, don't we? I, I would... You ever hear the saying, if I knew then what I know now? What, I mean, I, I tell you, through all these years, if I could, man, just think about what I could have done. But you know what? I can't do nothing about tomorrow, so, but I can do something about today. I can make a difference. I don't care what I did yesterday. I don't care what you did yesterday. It's about today. It's about today. You can, be, you can change. You don't have to carry around the burden of the sin that you committed yesterday. The blood of Jesus covers that. He covers our sin. There ain't one person in here that's not ashamed of something they've done in their life. Not one person here, including myself. But you know what? I am covered. When Jesus died on that cross and rose again, I was covered by the blood of Jesus. And you are covered too. So I don't have to worry about that. I can enjoy the blessings of the day. And I can, I, I can, be, I can, I can know that my God loves me. He died for me. He died for you. Look at Psalm 118. Well, I already did that, didn't I? All right, I'm on number five. Living each day thankfully, do not take for granted. And now I've got Psalm 1611. Thanks for keeping me on my toes. You make known to me the path of life in your presence. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. That's one of the things that I notice that I battle with the most, probably most Christians, is the joy of the Lord. It's really hard sometimes in this world with the, with the things that we see around us, all around us, to have the joy of the Lord, isn't it? It can be difficult to maintain that. But do you know why Satan wants to steal and rob your joy? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you lose your joy, you lose your strength. You lose your effectiveness as a witness for Jesus Christ. How many want to, how many want to receive a message from a sourpuss? I mean, ah, I'm, I'm miserable, but I love Jesus. Yeah, okay, they're going to listen to you. Yeah, they're, they're, hey, I want that. Yeah, yeah. I want to be miserable like you. And uh, just let, let everything, uh, yeah. no, 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 no. The joy of the Lord. Man, when you got the joy, man, your countenance changes. Everything changes. Life changes. And, and you're, just, you're just thankful. You're thankful. Uh, and we got to be thankful. When you live in the reality of God's presence, because His presence, there is fullness of joy. We gotta, you got to get to your best friend, Jesus Christ. He's got to be your best friend. you got to communicate with Him. you got to talk with Him. He's always there. When everyone else is sleeping and you're awake and you can't sleep, guess what? He's there. You can go to Him. You can enter the throne of grace. You, your prayers enter heaven. You, how comforting is that to know you can lay in your bed at night or lay anywhere or stand somewhere or sit somewhere and, and my prayers go directly to the throne of grace. And Jesus Christ is interceding on my behalf or your behalf. And then when your prayers go up to heaven, his power comes down from heaven. And that's where, you know, I talk about it all the time because I can't get over that. I can't get over the fact that, that I get to pray to my God in heaven. And he's going to intercede and send power from heaven down. And I believe in the power of prayer. Do you? Do you believe in the power of prayer? You better believe in it because it's real and it works. Number six, another reason we need to stop and smell the rose in life because it is short. Short. It is very short. Look at James 4.14. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. None of us know what tomorrow. You know, I've heard a saying before, you want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Because how many, how many plans have been changed by God? I know, and, and on a regular basis. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. And that's, that, that, and, and I tell you, church, time is ticking. You ever heard the saying, time waits for no one? 
Well, I love this Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. We'll get a little glimpse of this. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and every one of us has been born, and a time to die. And guess what? Every one of us is going to die, unless Jesus comes first. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. And that's one of the beauties of here. We, we planted it, and it grew, and, and there it is. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. And I, and I said it the first time, i got to say it again. Man, how, how awesome were them two people here that came here dancing? I just enjoyed just seeing the joy, just watching them dance last night, and that other woman that was dancing all over the place, and then the children were up here dancing. I, I mean, and I even had the woman come up to me and say, uh, we didn't know whether we could dance here or not because uh, my mother goes to a Southern Baptist church and they don't dance in that church. I said, well, well guess what? We're Southern Baptists and we dance, you know, because guess what? Because the Bible says it. That's why we do it, because the Bible says it. I don't care what man says. It's what God says. And, and they had a good time and, and it was a great time last night of, of rejoicing in the Lord and, and just celebrating. And uh, but. But there's um, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to, to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time to, for war and a time for peace. Okay, so there's a time and a season for everything, isn't there? Okay. Huh? Hate. You know what? Jesus said that. Jesus said, hate your mother, brother, brother and all that. You know, comp- our, love for Je- our love for Jesus looks like hatred towards our others. But it, it, he doesn't mean it in a literal sense of hate. But the fact that um, hatred's all around this world. There is, there, hatred is... is, is it's it's ugly it's ugly but it's it's a real part of life you know and and even christians we we should hate the things that god hates we should we should hate the very things that god hates and love the things that he loves number seven live joyfully prayfully thankfully first thessalonians 5 16 through 18 i love this love this scripture rejoice Always. So we're not, we're to rejoice. All, it doesn't say rejoice unless you're going through cancer, unless you're on your deathbed, unless you're, uh, you're, you're having a rough time in your marriage. It, doesn't say, it says rejoice always. And then it says pray without ceasing. And there's nothing like having, pray without ceasing is just having an attitude of prayer. Just you're focused on Jesus. Man, he's right there with you. You know, that you talk, he's your best friend. You you communicate with him constantly, all day long. You're constantly speaking to him, uh, asking him questions. uh, Just, uh, just, just like a best friend that 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 never goes away and never hurts you, never leaves you, nor forsakes you. He is he. If you have any other best friend than Jesus Christ, you got the wrong best friend. Jesus Christ is my best friend. Yes, I have some earthly best friends. And, but, but he is the, he is there for me all the time. I can't be there for you even as your pastor all the time. But guess what? Jesus is always there for you. Amen? Amen. Yes. Okay. Let's look at Colossians. Did I finish? No. Give thanks in all circumstances. Oh, you mean even if I'm going through this What's the worst thing you ever went through? Even through that, I'm supposed to give thanks in that? You know why we can do that as Christians? Because we know our God is working all things together for good to those who love Him and those who are called according to His purpose. We know that because He promised us that. And you've got to believe that. I, that verse, you hear me say it all the time. You know why? Because I say it all the time. When you all ain't around, I'm still saying it all the time. Because I, I look at, you know, I, I'm thankful that he is working it all together for good. He didn't say it was all going to be good, but he's working it all together for the good. He's always working. He's always moving. He's always, so I can give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. 
So it is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you to give thanks always. Amen? I didn't say it. The Word of God said it. Okay, um, now I want to look at Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do, that means that covers what? Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything. Everything you do in the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't care what you do, what you say, it's all in the name of Jesus. Everything is, we, we're to do everything in the name of Jesus. If we started doing everything in the name of Jesus, we would stop doing the things that are not of Jesus, wouldn't we? Because everything that we do is in the name of Jesus. Our speech, man, there's sometimes speech comes out, we can't, we can't grab it back, can we? I don't know how many times I wish I could just, oh, come on back. But you know what? Once it comes out, it's gone, man. We, but, but we can surely ask for forgiveness, and he does forgive us. But, every, but, but we'll remember next time to, to watch what we say. Giving thanks to God the Father through him, through Jesus Christ. Okay, number eight. When we stop and smell the roses, we need to be focused on living for the glory of God. Are you living for the glory of God today? Look at, look at how you're living your life. Are you living for the glory of God? If Jesus came back today, right now, and you had to stand before him and to give an account of your life, would you be able to say, I'm living for your glory, Jesus. I'm so glad to see you. I, I've been living for your glory. I, I've been longing to see you. Or would you be ashamed and say, oh, I ain't been living for your glory, God. I'm really sorry. Um, but we're to live for the glory of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, that clues what? Pretty much everything. Do what? All to the glory of God. So everything that we say, everything that we do is for the glory of God. And I know what causes fights and quarrels among you? What did James say? It's from the sin that's within us. It's from our selfishness. It's from our self-centeredness. And we get, and it just, it, it just, it's like a cancer in your stomach, man. It just starts, it starts building up, man. You, you, could, you could just feel it like, and then it starts rising to your heart because out of the, over the flow of your heart, the mouth speaks. So now it's filled your heart up. But you ain't said it yet, but you can't wait to say it. Here it comes. Um, and then, and then it just goes, man. It just explodes out. But whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Okay. Number nine and last, living for Jesus. Colossians 3, 1 through 4. I don't know who you're living for today, but if you're living for anyone other than Jesus, you're, 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 you're not living, you're not going to get the abundant life. You are not going to live the abundant life, doing, living life for you, living life for your, your children, living life for your spouse, living life for, I don't care, anybody else. You've got to live it for Jesus. This is the, he, gave, he, he gave you life, and we've got to live for him. Look at Colossians 3, 1 through 4, and it says, If, then, you have been raised with Christ. How many of you have been raised with Christ? How many of you have been are born again and know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Well, then I'm talking to you. Seek the things that are above. We're, we're high above the things of this world where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And I want to add the fact that he is interceding on your behalf too. Set your minds. Man, here's where the battle goes. It's true that the battleground is the mind. The mind is, man, my mind, my mind. I hope your mind's not like mine, but it probably is because we're, we're all human. But man, my mind never stops. Never stops. Even when I'm sleeping, it's just nonstop. That's why I don't sleep much. I'm constantly thinking, thinking. I'm a, um, but set your minds on, on things that are above, not on things on earth. And I wonder if we looked at our life, what we are, if, if we could get inside of our thought process, how much percentage do we think about here and how much do we think about the things that are above, the, the kingdom things? I bet you, if we're honest, most of us spend 90% of our time or better Focusing, thinking about this life right now, and we, but but guess what? For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Most of us have not lived this reality that you are you are 
died when you came to Christ. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And I want to close with one verse that is one of the most, I think, the most important verses in the Bible for us to walk and to stop and smell the roses and to live for Jesus. Th this verse right here, Galatians 2.20, is words to live by. Replace that I with your name. I'm going to say, I, I, Paul, have been crucified with Christ. And guess what? You know what that means? It means that I no longer live. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, yes, we have this flesh, and it never, man, the cravings of the flesh never stop. I am hungry right now. I could go for some ribs right now. My flesh is screaming for some ribs right now. I don't even know if I'm eating ribs, but that's what I'm screaming for. But guess what? It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in you. If you're a born-again believer, Christ lives in you. And the life I now live, because just like I gave this illustration before, I'll give it again. When I was a non-believer, when I first came to Christ, I remember sitting in my car right right in front of my trailer when I lived in a trailer and my cousin was in the passenger side we had just went somewhere and he stopped me and he said Paul I miss the old Paul or he said I miss the old Paul he didn't say Paul twice but anyway I miss the old Paul and I had to tell him because I was a partier and I was um he missed that you know I used to do all, do all the crazy stuff um worked hard to get the nickname wild man I, I guess I earned it over the years but the point is I told him that, basically I told him Galatians 2.20 without even knowing Galatians 2.20, because back then I was a new believer, but I knew that I died. And I told him that the old Paul had to die. I couldn't live that life anymore. I, I found Jesus. I found Jesus, and I found new life, new hope. I have a new reason to live every morning when I get up, because I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Don't ever get over the fact that Jesus loves you enough that he would die for you. There ain't many people in this life that would, would go to the cross for you or me. But he did because of his love for you. Okay. Um, that's the end of the sermon, but I want to let you know that I want, I want everyone that, that wants one to come take a rose. Be careful with the thorns uh, before you leave because, um, you know, so please take one before you go. And at the, at the conference, um, whoever, get, you bring me the balls back, it won't hurt you. I, I shot myself close range and it didn't hurt. So when I shoot you, I'm not going to, don't act like it hurts because it don't hurt. I did it to myself, close range, it doesn't hurt. It, it might sting it for a second, but. <laughs> All right, so you. Bring a ball up, get a candy bar. Okay, I got 12 balls. I'm going to shoot you. You're first. <laughs> you would give me a hard time for both services. No, I'm just kidding with you. So, uh, all right, everybody ready? Get your hands up. I want you to catch them. Uh, let me stand back here. All right, ready? I don't know how far you're going to go. <laughs> I'm out. All right. So c come get your rose and come get your candy bar. That woke everybody up, right? <laughs> <laughs>